What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our new show, Wine Time with Katie and Tosh. I'm Katie. And I'm Tosh. And we're going to review a few wines for you guys here today. Um, what we got here, we have three wines here. One is called the Rosa Imperial. Huh? This is a semi-sweet wine. This one here is called Ron's Chillable Red. And this one is the infamous Witching Hour. So we're going to try these three wines for you guys today. We're going to let you guys know our thoughts. And uh, if you want to try these at the end of the, the review, go ahead and go to the store and copy one. So let's get into it. So the first one we're going to try today is the Rosa Imperial. Okay, you, you ready to try? I'm ready. Huh? I'm more than ready. All right, let's go. Let's see. Where's your glass at? The first one. Okay. I feel like this, look at that. Ooh. I feel like this one's gonna be good. You don't wanna pour too much. Yeah, not too much, not too much there. Not too much. Unless we're just me chugging it. So it's sparkly. You think it's a sparkle one? It is, for sure. Okay, well. What does it say? On level of sweetness, it's a six on a scale of 10. So okay. it'll be pretty, pretty sweet. Um, let's let's just go ahead and give it a try. First of all, what do you smell? Is it is it? Uh... Oh, it's definitely like a champagne for sure. Oh yeah, that's, you smell it right off the nose. That's sweet. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one thing that we learned um, through wine tasting was that when it gets poured into a glass and you and you move it around, the what they say that it gets oxygenated. What was the term? So what oxygen does to the wine is just it releases more of the um, molecules in the wine to give off a stronger smell. So when you do that, like this, it's supposed to give off a more intense uh, smell to the wine. And I think I also um, heard on an, another. Um, review or tasting that we went to is your first uh your first taste is through smell or something is what they said yeah. so that's why they're having you yeah. smell it and then you'll taste more yeah right and so the the color of the wine and we don't have a white sheet which we probably should but we don't have a white sheet but it's like a burgundy uh color right burgundy in color yeah let's go ahead and taste it and there's not many legs on there either That's sweet. Yeah, that's very sweet. Yeah. That is definitely a sweet wine. <laughs> For sure. Um, on a scale of one to ten, yeah, I would say that this was about a six. Um, and it has a little fizz to it. So it's it's similar to a spark sparkling wine, but it's it's not quite they I don't think they would label it a sparkling wine. It's very light bodied. Um you could maybe chill this, honestly. No, this this definitely would be a lot better chilled. Yeah. The alcohol content is definitely not high at all. Mm -hmm. I would think it was, you know, maybe a six or a seven. Well, it is a five. It's a five percent. So, you know, it's it's uh, not a high alcohol content. It's very good, um, very smooth, um, light bodied uh, wine. On a scale of one to ten, is a six on a sweet. Uh, scale. So if you um, if you are someone who is just starting out on, you know, tasting wines and things like that, I do recommend this one. Um, it's because it's it's very easy to you know get you into the 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 wine tasting because a lot of the drier wines uh, take a more um, you know complex, complex. palate mm -hmm. um, and uh, it probably <laughs> it probably won't taste fantastic at first when you try the more dry ones so yes so we definitely give this one uh, a thumbs up for you know people who want to just you know try uh, a nice sweet wine so next we have the Ron's chillable red this comes from California so we're gonna give this one a quick taste Wow. Oh, this wow. one <laughs> this one tastes a lot sweeter. I feel like I smell strawberry. Not right sweeter, off. but a lot more um 
fruitful, right? Yeah, definitely. But strawberry, that's the yeah, color. strawberry. Very berry filled. Now they also say to serve this chilled. We didn't, so um, yeah, it actually has chillable in the name. So yeah, it says <laughs> chill a little, but we'll see. Definitely strawberry. Yeah. Um, Other berries. I just maybe black right off maybe the blackberry. Throat. So yeah, let's let's try it. Oh wow. That's definitely strawberry and blackberry. Yeah, that's right on par with the um, rosa. Yeah, that's pretty close. Imperial, right? Yeah. I believe it's like a, a six or a five on the um, you know sweet scale is it is light bodied um the color is pretty um it's pretty much the same as the other one it's like a burgundy um color i think the main difference between this one and this one is this one is more of a champagne soda y type um type wine and this one doesn't have that sparkling thing to it yeah no it, it doesn't have uh, any sparkle to it however i feel like this is probably more more of a smoother transition than the first one um, because of that carbonation so I think um, beginners or people who um, want to start out um, trying wines this probably would be another one on your list mm -hmm. I would still try the imperial one but um, this would be a second choice for you as well. And both are really good, uh, I would say, summer wines. Um, you know, something that if you're just wanting to, you know, have your, it's a hot summer day, you just want to like pour a glass of, you know, this, this wine and go outside, sit on your deck or, you know, your front porch or something. These are definitely the wines to do that with for sure. All of these, I mean, I mean, these two, um, aren't, you can tell aren't very high in alcohol content. So this is something that you can, you know, sip on throughout, um, you know, your gathering at, during the summertime, like Katie said. This is a little bit higher in alcohol content. So this is 7.1% um, alcohol content. So. And this one, this one's a five. So this would be closer to your beers that you would typically have. Um, and this one's just a little more at the, at the seven. So um, I don't think you'd have to worry about uh, if you had, you know, a second or third glass yeah, falling out. Yeah. So. You should be okay. You should be okay. It, and it's, it's, you know, it's not something, wine isn't something that you guzzle like, like beer uh, um, anyway. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Have savor a, it. Yeah, just savor it. Have a good a good pace so that it doesn't creep up on you so hard and and, and just come on to you like a, a ton of bricks. Um, yeah, so we de definitely recommend this wine as well for beginners. So the next wine we're gonna try is the Witching Hour. The Witching Hour has a lovely label on it, a nice label. I'm not sure if you guys can see that there. All warm colors, I, I, I'm attracted to warmer colors and, 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 and labels, but let's check this out. So for this one, we need a wine opener. And this one specifically, it's a red blend. So you're gonna be able to see different notes and things with this versus what we started off with. So you might be able to do, you know, your normal tests that you. Um, this one is very different. Off the nose alone. Um, this one has more of a complex nose. So this one I feel like has a little bit of blackberry, black cherry um, notes. Um, I don't know what that last thing is. Um, I, and you'll come to know I'm not very good at this um, when it comes to being able to smell a wine and, and like unless it's like as obvious as these ones were i am not that one i even tasting it i'm not that one he's that one and that's what i depend on him for let's go ahead and uh, taste it that one's actually pretty shocking that's not what you would expect with a typical red blend i mean i know it says sweet red but yeah so this one um I think this one would definitely be pair well with cheese. Yes. You know, 
um, like a sharp cheese. It's, it's definitely, definitely not, not as sweet as the other two are. This one on the sweet scale is probably maybe a four. It's not quite dry, but it, it is sweet enough for, like I said, if you are a beginner, um, this would be this would be you know in the wheelhouse of, of another um, baby step another, into yeah, another baby step okay. into uh, the world of wine for sure. And I really like this one. I really do. Yeah, I really like this one. I do too. Um, I think another thing that I don't think we shared in the first two wines is you can typically tell the alcohol content by what's called what they refer to as the legs so if you're swirling your glass around and you see these little droplets or teardrops that form around the glass and they there's one a lot of them and two they go very slow it just means that there's a higher uh, alcohol content so this one specifically we went from a five to a 7.1 and this one i think is a 13 or 14. this one a 13? this one is a 12. this was a, a 12% alcohol, which is higher than the other two, but it's not, I, I know um, maybe in, in your mind you would think like, oh, that, that would taste, you know, a lot hard, a lot more harsh than the other two. It's actually not as bad. Like I said, on the, on the sweet scale, it's probably around a four or five. Um, and it's not really dry either. No. Um, and what we mean, what you, what we mean by dry is that, um, there's a it, there's a there's no sweetness there and you can taste um more of a bolder um taste in the wine um a lot of people tend to shy away from the more drier wines because um it is more of an acquired taste to them um but that's why we chose these because we wanted to um show you guys the um the wines that you can try out for yourself to you know kind of take those little baby steps into um the world of wine so that you can you know develop a palate over time the witching wine though is very very good i, I think that is probably my favorite out of the three what, which one would you think is your i think your we i agree but i think we also have a bias because we enjoy you know our palates a little more condition towards dry i'm not a, a sweet wine fan by any means um but witching hour i do really enjoy that one but this one isn't as, it's not as sweet you think this is is as sweet as the other two no i do not i think okay. that this is the least sweet but it's just enough right it's you know, just it's enough not, sweetness yeah. to get you over the hump it's, yes. it's not dry but it's it is not too sweet so this one actually i think is probably perfect for intermediate you know level so if you are someone who do you know enjoy a casual glass of wine um in the evening i would go for the witching hour wine um if you've already you know are like a few months or maybe a year into drinking wine and things like that that one i can't get over that one that one is like that's really a good, good one yeah it's actually really really good um savory for sure yeah, and I, and I feel like this one would pair well with um, like chicken, maybe a steak, New York strip or something like that. You know, something that's not too, not too hearty. Um, but I also think that um, with the other two as well, I think those are more for um, like a, a sit around, you know. Yeah, definitely like a party barbecue wine. or something. Definitely yeah. these for sure. And I, and I say that with uh, the witching hour one because it does it does it's not very sweet so with the more savory wines when you are like eating a, a steak or a piece of chicken or something like that it does something to the taste to where it it, um, it complements the food so with the witching wine one because it's not so sweet um, you can pair it with like a steak or a piece of chicken or maybe even fish as well. And like we said, uh, the first one was 5%, right? The second one was 12? No, the second one's 7. 7%. And then this one is 12%. 12 so, um, but this is also, the witching hour one is also something that you can, you know, sit around and have a conversation and, and you know, sip on throughout the evening with friends and family. So I guess out of the three, my vote is for the witching hour. Which one? I would definitely agree with you without a witching doubt. Hour? Mm -hmm. Witching hour right. is definitely number one. Yeah. Uh, but that's not to um, 
you know, slight any of the other ones as well because your palate is different from ours. So you might like the other two um, more. But, uh, we, you know, we appreciate you guys for uh, tuning in. Um, we're going to be doing more wine reviews. This is the first one, the first episode, which I'm very excited about because uh, we just wanted to get... Uh, the the first episode out and rolling to you guys so that we can uh, figure out more um, or a wider range of wines to to try for you guys um, and in the comments below please just let us know if you tried these before and or if you have more uh, suggestions for us to try for further videos so I've been Taj and I'm Katie and we'll see y'all in the next one peace <laughs>